Hello! Today I'm working on this image that I took during the first Weekender video while I was at Caprock Canyon. The image has a little bit of color and contrast work done as well as a little bit of noise reduction work done and if you'd like to know how I did that then you should watch the first How I Did It video on how I post process the night sky in Lightroom. Now I'm going to take it to the next level in Photoshop and really emphasize the Milky Way, control any out of place color cast that may be in the photo and give it a little bit of Orton effect glow. It's important to know that when I'm working in Photoshop like this, I like to take breaks often and I use layers so that I can work non-destructively on the photo and if I don't like the way a layer looks, then I can lower that layer's opacity or even delete that layer and try again. The first thing that I'm going to do with this photo is I'm going to dodge and burn the Milky Way. And to do that, I use two different kinds of layers, soft light layers, as well as overlay layers. The first layer that I'm going to start with is going to be a dodge layer, and it's going to be a soft light layer. And I will use a paintbrush, painting in white, and the opacity of that brush will be between 5 and 10%, and a flow of about 25%. When I'm working this way, I like to think of it as airbrushing the photograph. You just want to make very subtle effects. The subtlety is the key. I'm going to name this layer Dodge because that's what I'm going to be doing. This way I know what this layer is in case I need to change it later or even get rid of it and do it again. And I'm going to change that layer type to Soft Light. I already have my paintbrush set to white and I have my opacity and flow set. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the Milky Way since that's what I'm working on. Grab my paintbrush tool and I'm going to use the bracket keys to make the brush a little bit smaller and I'm just going to, on the bright parts of this photo, just kind of brush it in, just gently airbrush this effect. Just hit all these gases and brighter parts of the Milky Way them itself, as well as some of the brighter star clusters that may be in here. And if you want to see what that's doing, you can click the little eye tool and you can kind of see it disappear and then when you click it back you'll see it come back up get some of these brighter areas right in here now you don't just have to dodge light you can also dodge colors into the photo as well so what I'm going to do here is create a new layer and it's going to be a soft light layer once again and I'm going to call it dodge color and I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and I'm going to grab one of these magenta colors that's already here in the Milky Way just not too saturated but a very light magenta color I will take my paintbrush and I will just paint that in where I see kind of that magenta color already prevailing. I just want to emphasize the colors that are already there. Like this little star cluster here. And we'll take a blue color. Again, just go for a light, non-saturated blue, and we'll paint that in where there's already kind of some blue areas in the Milky Way here. Just really emphasize all these nice colors that are already in the galactic core. And then one more color that I want to emphasize is the color of the core itself. So I'm going to grab a very warm color, kind of that desaturized orange. And 
and we're just going to paint that into the core itself. And you can turn that on and off to see what it's doing. It's very subtle, like I said, subtlety is the key. Next, I'm going to make a burn layer. So make a new layer and call it burn. Once again, we're going to be using a soft light layer. This time though, we're going to be painting in black. And we're just going to paint in all these darker areas. Just really give the Milky Way some contrast. You can turn that on and off to see what it's doing. And then one last layer, and this is going to be an overlay layer. And I'm going to name it Overlay. Overlay layers you have to be very careful with because they are pretty much pure contrast. We want to paint that with white. I'm going to use a little bit bigger of a brush and it's just going to be an overall layer on the Milky Way. You can turn that on and off again so you can see what's going on. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm going to zoom out to where it's on, fit on my screen, maybe even zoom out just a little bit more. Now we can evaluate what needs to be fixed in this photo. And the first thing that jumps out to me is this red color cast that's in the foreground. Now the soil at Caprock Canyon is very red, but what I found with nighttime images is that the camera tends to give the foreground a little bit too much of a red color cast. And so to control that, I'm going to use a hue and saturation layer. And what's nice about hue and saturation layers is they come with an attached mask to them so that you can control exactly what the layer is affecting. Now I'm going to take the hand tool and I'm just going to drag it down until the foreground looks just a little bit more normal. Then I will use Control i or Command-I if you're on a Mac to invert that layer mask. Grab my paintbrush and I have the opacity set to 50% and the flow set to 25%. And I'm going to set the paintbrush to white and then I'm going to paint that into the foreground. when you let up on your mouse, you can see what you're affecting on the layer mask. I'm going to use the bracket keys to make the brush just a little bit bigger. Now that I have the foreground looking how I want it to, I'm going to work a little bit more on the Milky Way. And what I want to do is emphasize the blue tone that's in the middle of the Milky Way. To do that, I will use another hue and saturation layer take the hand tool and just drag up the Milky Way just a little bit. We don't want to do too much because it's affecting the whole sky and also some of those warmer tones that we were putting in the Milky Way earlier. I'm going to take a black brush. I'm going to change the opacity to 20 and the flow to 50. You can go over that as many times as you like to get the desired mask.
Now that I've corrected the color cast in the photo, I want to do a little bit more correction with the sky and get rid of any color banding that I might see in here. To do this, I'm going to use a color layer because that will affect the colors of what I painted into without affecting the luminance values at all. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call it sky color. Then I'm going to use a color type layer. Then I will use the eyedropper tool to grab one of the colors of blue that's already in the sky that I like. Then I will take my paintbrush. And for this layer, I think the 20% opacity and the 50% flow should still work really well. I'm just going to make my brush a little smaller. I'm just going to paint that in to the sky. You really want to take your time because this is a layer that can kind of make or break the photo a little bit because the sky is kind of the main feature of this image. Now I'm going to stamp everything onto a new layer with Control alt shift e or Command-Option-Shift-E if you're on Mac. And then I'm going to create an Orton effect. And what this will do is it will soften and blend the image a little bit. First we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and you can set the percentage of the blur just a little bit below the megapixels of your camera, you still want to be able to pick out the key features of the image, but you want it to be very soft. Now we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness Contrast. We'll set the brightness to 8 and the contrast to 100. And that is really hard to look at. So what I'm going to do is take the opacity of the layer itself and turn that down to 8. Now you can turn this up as much as you like. I tend to find that I never go beyond 13% with this effect. And you can turn it off and on to kind of see what it's doing there. Now we're finished with the image and we can save it. And we can take it back to Lightroom and export it with whatever settings we want. I hope you learned something from this video and I hope it helps you get used to using Photoshop a little bit more. If it did, give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing. Bye for now.